This segment brought to you by Kansas Corn. Learn more at kscorn.com. Riparian forest buffers are just a fancy term that basically describes a combination of trees, shrubs, and usually native grasses along some type of a stream. And there's lots of reasons to have them along these riparian or streamside corridors. When you look at a property, it depends on if there's any existing trees right beside the, the stream itself or, or not. If there's not, it's usually uh, a good opportunity to go in and start your planting adjacent to the existing stream bank and then plant, plant out towards that. A typical uh, buffer design has the faster growing trees right along the stream and then you transition out into some maybe longer term, more valuable commercial species like your oaks and walnuts to have then a shrub component on the outside of that to try to transition it into an open area such as a crop field that adds extra benefit for wildlife as well. And then to have a, a grass corridor between the trees and the crop field so the landowner's not fighting against tree branches in the future. It makes it uh, kind of a nice transition. The grass also helps increase the filtering capacity of the, the buffer too. The two most uh, common, uh, common claimed are for water quality and water quantity benefits and especially associated with a reservoir like Tuttle Creek. The sedimentation issue has been an increasing issue since its inception. Uh, Reaching its conservation pool in the early 1960s uh, up till now, the sedimentation has increased to where the capacity of the reservoir has uh, lost about 40%. So uh, trees, especially along stream sides, can help increase that by helping stabilize the, the stream banks, the sediment along the banks. From the standpoint of sedimentation and how riparian forest buffers can help, uh, to illustrate a little bit of the importance of the sedimentation issue, you can see here at Tuttle Creek Reservoir, this is the Fancy Creek uh, State Park area, you can see over time how much sedimentation has accumulated in here. Uh, when the reservoir was built, this was one of the uh, park areas that was to be utilized for camping, uh, and now it's just not as accessible because of the sedimentation that has uh, accumulated. Of course, this is where uh, Fancy Creek and uh, the Blue River uh, come in from the, the north, and uh, as the water starts to slow down, a lot of that sediment uh, that's suspended in, in the water is dropped out and accumulates here, so you see more evidently the, the issues that uh, we are, are and will be dealing with. The reservoir actually has the upper uh, watershed boundary or drainage areas up into Nebraska. There's just shy of 10,000 square miles with about three quarters of that in Nebraska. Now when it gets into Kansas, there's about one and a half million acres of drainage area. Uh, some of the research that I've seen specifically to Kansas says that uh, about 170 different sites along the rivers have been identified to contribute to over 500,000 tons of sediment annually to the reservoir, so trying to stabilize those streams are very important. I think this is an important issue not only in Kansas but nationally. Uh, this sedimentation is, is a natural process of uh, uh, a hydrological ecosystem, but in some instances such as this, uh, with failing stream banks, with uh, um, increased erosion, it can be sped up. So this is something not only at Tuttle Creek Reservoir that uh, you can see issues with, but also in other areas. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org.